Welcome to Knowledge Graphs, Lecture 3, Querying Knowledge Graphs with Sparkle. My name is Tabea Tietz. And I'm Harald Sack. And today we want to take you on an excursion to get to know the DBpedia Knowledge Graph. We want to tell you what it is and, of course, how to query it. Okay, so DBpedia, probably you have heard it already, and the Web of Data. If you look at the huge linked open data cloud, you will find DBpedia right at the center because this is one of the central hubs of the Web of Data because a lot of other data sets, most of it actually, are referring to DBpedia as a reference point. So therefore, it's quite important in the Web of Data. If you look at the timeline, you see that DBpedia, of course, somehow relates to Wikipedia. Wikipedia started in 2001, so more than 20 years ago, and already in 2007, there was the very first idea of the implementation of a semantic version of Wikipedia, which is the DBpedia. And you see on the timeline later on, there was an ontology developed or then also an entity linking tool for DBpedia, which was called Wikipedia Spotlight and so on. And there were several versions of it and it further develops. As then also further knowledge graphs were invented, like for example, Freebase was there in 27, uh, in 2007, Yago in 2008. And of course, we all remember the Google Knowledge Graph in 2012, which was able to enhance the Google search over the extent that was available previously. And also Wikidata then is a very important topic that we also will refer in another excursion that was introduced in 2012. But first, let's have a closer look at DBpedia. And let's start with some statistics. So these statistics are from a snapshot of DBpedia from September 2022. And in that snapshot, there are yeah, 850 million facts, so 850 million triplets, and they're connected via 55,000 properties, which is quite a lot. And just to give some example, we have 1.8 million persons in here. We have more than 600,000 creative works, which is exciting. Um, more than 300,000 organizations and also <laughs> 10,000 diseases. And also, DBpedia follows an internationalization effort and has def different language chapters. There's, for example, a French DBpedia chapter and there's also a German language chapter. And here, information, structured information from the German Wikipedia are extracted and made available as linked open data. By the way, the German version is hosted at Fitz Karlsruhe, which is our home organization. Yes. Okay, so how now is it created? I have already told you that, of course, it's closely related to Wikipedia. And if you look at a Wikipedia article, probably you have seen already these kind of info boxes that are put here right on the side. And exactly from this data, that's the origin of DBpedia, because here we have provided structured data within those lexicon or encyclopedia web pages that we have within Wikipedia. So that can easily be extracted. And you see also for the same entity or the web page you have here from 1984, if you look at the URI there, there is a corresponding URI in DBpedia and the suffix here. So the name 1984 stays exactly the same, while here in front uh, the prefix of course changes here at the DBpedia prefix. And that's the resource we are talking about, because here we are not talking about documents, we are talking about the thing of it. So 1984 as a novel. Okay, if you click on it, of course, then you don't get back the novel, but you get back a description. So all of the data and metadata that is available about the 1984 uh, book or novel. And then you can, of course, scroll through it in a human readable form. That's the HTML representation. We have talked about this kind of representation that we have on the web when we did HTTP content negotiation, which means you also can do via content negotiation to access exactly this resource and then say you won't have uh, as, a, as, a, as a content type, uh, let's say text turtle, and then you get back, of course, a turtle version of exactly that web page. Which means let's first have a look at the different naming conventions that we have at DBpedia. 
So as already told, we, in Wikipedia we have here the web page, so here have here wiki and 1984, and the entity identifier for the entity 1984 would be resource 1984. If you look at the HTML version that we have seen on the page uh, previously, that's then page 1984, and there is also then an RDF version, so the RDF XML data version, for example, that's dbpedia.org slash data1984. So there are different namespaces for all of these different representations that we have here, and they can, of course, then be also negotiated via HTTP content negotiation. Right, and we just saw a glimpse of one of these Wikipedia info boxes, and you probably saw this in Wikipedia yourself as well. And for many of the entities, there are some info boxes which give us some brief and initial information that is relevant for certain entities, and there are also certain types of info boxes then. For example, we have an info box about the novel 1984, then of the person, George Orwell, then we also have here the film 1984, and of course different information are presented here. And then we also have, of course, the BBC television, and here you can also see that the information differs also. We have, for example, um, headquarters given, and then also we have Hall to the Thief, which is a studio album. And now what Wiki, uh, what DBpedia does is to extract, automatically extract the information from the info boxes and integrate them into the DBpedia knowledge graph. And this info box here is about the novel 1984. Therefore, in DBpedia we get the instance, the resource 1984, of which you can see here this URI. And on the bottom here we have this table, and on the left hand side we have um, yeah, something like author, country, language, genre, and so on and so forth. And the left side of this table is used for the dbpedia properties, and they will be a part of the dbpedia.org property namespace. And this property namespace means that these information are extracted automatically and integrated into dbpedia. And in this case, this author property is extracted and helps us to connect the author itself, George Orwell, for which another entity is then created, um, here also dbpedia.org, resource George Orwell. And this is how the information gets into dbpedia. Okay, if you look closely, you will see that there are two different types of property definitions in dbpedia. One are the so-called unmapped, which are simply taken from the info box, and then there are other ones that are based on an ontology, which is the dbpedia ontology. So there exists an ontology, which means a predefined schema for what you can do, what kind of classes you have there, what kind of properties you have there. So our 1984 here is a book. So it's the RDF type DBO book because book is part of the um, DBpedia ontology and it's defined as being a subclass of written work, which is a subclass of work, which is a subclass of OWL thing. So OWL we haven't spoken about, we will do this next week. However, just think of it, everything is of type OWL thing because this is the most general thing that you can always imagine. Here you see on the side a glimpse of, you know, the structure of the dbpedia ontology and overall simply click here on the ontology classes and then you will see all of the classes including their definition. There is a second class or category system which is imported from Wikipedia. If you have ever looked at Wikipedia pages, on the bottom of Wikipedia pages, you see sometimes these kind of boxes that contain here lots of clickable categories, where Wikipedia web pages are aggregated into specific categories, things that fit together. And of course this is also harvested by dbpedia, and uh, then of course it's not a type definition because these categories are not strictly, you know, class and instance memberships, but 
it's something which is related to, and there is another vocabulary that is used here, it's the so-called here uh, DC terms vocabulary, and there is a property which is called subject, and it says 1984 is of has the following subject, and the subject it's uh, part of is here dystopian novels. And then we have also again something like a subclass relationship here, but it's not exactly a subclass because you know, subclass relation has a strict formal definition, which means an instance of the first must also be an instance of the second, and this holds for all of the members of the first. And this is not always the case here, because this is simply a broader, these are concepts, and the next one is simply broader than the previous one. And for that there exists also a vocabulary to connect these classes together in a hierarchical way, with a more loose fashion, then with a subclass of, and this is the SCOS vocabulary, we will also talk about that later in the lecture, and one of the properties you have there is the broader property. And there you can say, for example, you have dystopian novels, which is of course then the subject of 1984, and this belongs to the more broader concept of science fiction literature, which belongs to the more broader concept of speculative fiction literature, which belongs to the more mm, general or broader thing like literature by genre. You see here, literature by genre, yeah, this is of course if it would be a class definition and then a 1984 would be in it, that would be kind of uh, awkward or strange. You have to be careful, um, there are only, let's say, several hundreds or thousand classes in the DBpedia ontology, but there are more than 1.5 million categories in Wikipedia, so there Wikipedia users have been rather creative especially in specific, let's say, popular culture-oriented things like, for example, Star Wars or Star Trek. <laughs> okay, so these were the Wikipedia categories. However, there is also a Sparkle endpoint. We have already used it in one of our lectures and we will use it again later on. So we don't click on that now, so you have already seen it. However, we will also introduce to you the great competitor of DBpedia, which is now even more famous and also much larger, that's Wikidata. So in the next excursion we will talk about the Wikidata knowledge graph.